Hey everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have Kule Dadaluk on with us. Kule, how's it going? It's going good, you know. It's evening time, just ready to get some work in before this podcast. Sure. How how, how was that? It was pretty good, you know. Got some touches on the ball, keep in shape for the next season coming up. For sure. Where, where, where are we, who are you training with right now? What organization are you with? Honestly, I'm just training with a couple of other offseason guys. Uh, nothing really too hectic. Just trying to get some touches, stay in shape. Nice. Is it like, me? FTF? Uh, FTF, we just did a couple of sessions just to stay fair. Like, as a group, I do, like, some little sessions with, young, with other people, like uh, Stephanie H., Jordan Ferre, and a couple other guys. Yeah, for sure. Shout out the guys. Um, shout out the organizations, off-season. Uh, obviously, you guys got to stay in shape and everything like that. But most excitingly, you guys just won um, the CPL. You guys broke for the streak. They're two winning streak. You guys just won. So, I mean, I was at the game, but you were on the pitch. So how was how was that experience for you? It was fun, amazing. You know, obviously, I was nervous at first, playing on the finals, you know. Anything could happen, but we really want to win. And we just stuck to the goal, coach's game plan. Stepping on the pitch was surreal for me, experience, you know. It was a weight crowd, so that was that was one thing. But once I got on the pitch, I felt like our game plan, what we stuck to, it helped us win overall. And I think we won the fans over at the end, even though they weren't for us. But seeing us win, I think it was good for the league and everybody involved. That's amazing. Again, congratulations on that accomplishment that you guys got. You, you're making history in the CPL. It's CPL has been going on for three years now. but you know, did you guys go into the game, you know, saying we got to win this? Like, what was the intention of going into the game? A first person, we knew that we could win, even though, like, our records was, wasn't favoring us. We felt like our game plan, we know, it was our time. You know, it's a one and done type of game. You know, it's not no series. So we just got to get this one win. And we know what we had to do to win. We just followed our game plan from the start. Absolutely. How was the feeling? What was the experience like for you? It was it was nerve wracking at first because I had to get on the field. You know, it was one nothing. We were playing to hold on to the lead. But I felt like once after a couple minutes, like the nerves settled down. I just played my game and helped the team get the, the well deserved victory. Right. And what about after? You know, the game's over. The final whistle. You guys know you won. How was lifting up the trophy and celebrating in the change room? It was amazing. It was like a sign of relief. All the hard work we put in from the start of the year, from the bubble to preseason, all of that was worth it. Knowing that we are, we're on top. We're the team that everybody's looking to be for next season. Right. That's amazing. So, Kule, how'd you, how'd you become a pro, right? Because we know that not many players get to go pro. So, you know, going back in time, you know, let's just start. How were you introduced to football? Honestly, I have two older brothers, and they played football. Uh, yeah, football growing up, and then my mom put me into football to follow the footsteps, and I just really enjoyed it at a young age. And then from there, I got noticed, played a little all star, and then I went to rep, played with West Toronto, and then from there, I got started to come try for TFC. I made it. I made it. I made it up with TFC, and I was there for a couple of years, and I decided it was time to go. I went to Europe for a little bit, uh, Denmark specifically, stayed there for a couple of time, then I came back to Ottawa. I unfortunately got injured during preseason, so I couldn't play in the last year season with them. But then from there, I got picked up by Pacific, and that's where that's basically today. I got picked up by Pa. He talked to me. He he put a plan out for me. I really enjoyed what he said, and I he brought me here for better things to come in the future. Absolutely, that's amazing. So, you know, you mentioned that you you were playing rep, and then you went to Toronto FC. What age were you at with Toronto FC, and then what age did you leave at with Toronto FC? Uh, around 2013-2014 season to the 2018-2019 season, I was at TFC. For a couple right. of years, I was just there with them. Right. What, what what advice would you give to players in the greater Toronto area for, you know, getting into the TFC system and staying in there and working your way up? Because you did that, right? What advice would you share with, you know, the local players here in the GTA? Uh, I always listen to what the coaches have to say. Even though it might hurt that they're telling you something, it's it's, it's helping for the future. You know, maybe if you have a bad touch or you can't chew, like always put in the work and like behind the scenes because they don't see that. They only see what they show, what they want to see from you. So I say you work behind the scenes and listen to the coaches, and that'll keep you staying on top. Because then they'll see that okay, he's listening to what I'm saying. He's working. He's working on it by himself. 
and I can see the improvements in them. So I obviously just stay on your game and just keep a level head. Got it. Great tips. So, um, Kule, when did you sign your first professional contract? I signed my first professional contract in uh, 2019 when I went to FC Helsinki in Denmark. You, sorry, you said 2019? Yes, 2019. 2019, and you're at 2000, right? Yes. So you were 19 at the time of signing your full, first pro contract, and that was at what team, sorry? FC Helsinki in Denmark. And then and this is Europe. Yeah, this is Europe. Okay. Nice. So, you know, what was that experience like? Because that's the main goal, to sign a yeah. pro contract. So what was that feeling like? Um, you know, you're putting pen to paper. You, you accomplished the goal. How did that all feel like? It was an amazing experience for me. I felt like sort of a relief, like, wow, I made it here. But as soon as I signed that contract, like, it all hit me, like, okay, now I'm back to the bottom. Now I have to work my, work my way up again. So it's like a sort of a love-hate relationship because, like, wow, I'm finally here. But then it, it hits you reality. Like, I have to keep on working because it's just the beginning. There's higher goals I want to reach. Right, right, right. It's, yeah, as you said, it's just the beginning. So what things changed for you? Because that's a status change. Um, now you're a pro, you got to make sure you're watching what you're eating, what you're doing on social media, what you're doing offline, like, you know, you're a professional now. So like, you know, what things changed around you and what changed in your mind as well? Uh, definitely my diet. Cause I, before I wasn't really eating as best, it wasn't helping in my game. But after signing pro, I realized like what you do off field really affects what you do on field. So I had to change my diet quite a bit. It was hard at first, but I got used to it and it, it really helped me win the long run, improving my game. And just staying focused and staying on my game, that also helped me a lot. Got it. So um, during your signing process, did you have an agent or is that something that you just took care of by yourself or with family? Oh, yeah, I have an agent. I'm currently with OPSM. So they help me with do all my contract talks. So I know it really smooth and well. Right. And um, if you don't mind me asking, um, with the agency side of things, I know, you know, um, there's so many different, just like going pro, there's so many different unique ways to go pro. There's yeah. so many different ways you can meet your agent. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how'd you meet your agent? And then how'd you know that this was the agency, that agency group that you wanted to move forward with to help you sign your pro contract? I met my agency through Instagram. You go back and forth. I also, like I scroll through his page, I see some players I like. I've, I've seen what he's done for others. I talked to him and then we made a personal goal for myself. And I really liked what you had to say to me and towards my family. And I knew that he was the right agency to sign with. Okay, nice. And what, what advice would you share with players? You know, sometimes players, um, you know, don't know what agent to go with if they even get the opportunity, even if, um, um, if they're even good enough to have an agent, right? So what advice would you share um, with players that want to go pro to get their agent? How would you, sorry, what advice would you share with them in regards of getting an agent? I feel like don't don't rush that whole sequence. Just let it happen naturally. Agents will always look out for the best players and they'll reach out to you if they like you. And even if they do reach out to you, make sure you have like a real connection with them. Have like a couple of conversations with them, even with your family, see what type of game plan they have for you. They might just want to sign you and then you don't know what's next. So make sure that there's steps in between that process before you make the final decision. Talk to them a lot, communicate with them and see, okay, this is where I want to go. See what they say is realistic for you. And if it's all their career and you feel that connection, I feel like then you should sign with them. If not, just keep on looking. They will, they'll come to you eventually. You don't have to keep searching for them. Nice. Those are great tips. So, you know, you played Toronto FC, which is like uh, anybody in the greater Toronto area. That's like a dream. That's a huge dream. Mm -hmm. Played for TFC. You played in Europe and Denmark. Now you're back in Canada playing in the CPO. What differences have you noticed in, in the league? Right. Um, because obviously each system is going to be in a, di a different experience. So what have you noticed that, um, that's different between uh, Canada and the Europe system and Denmark? Denmark system is a lot more, more fast paced, fast tempo. Every, everything is more cleaner, touches wise, shooting wise. Like they get really on you. There's no, you don't get like the time you, you think you'll have on the balls. Like you get, you take a touch, look up, someone's ready there. I feel like you have to have like mental awareness around you. Like, okay, before I get the ball, I already know what I'm going to do next. Like the mental side of the game is very much faster and the technical side is always clean. I feel like Canada side is a little bit more slower. You have time, 
but it's as hard. But I feel like you have a little bit more time to set up what you want to do. I feel like the intensity wise, it's a little bit more hard in Europe than it is in Canada. Got it. I mean, I mean, it's still young. It's still a young league three. Yeah, it's building, of course. For sure. So, it you know, in order to go to a completely another country, like you grew up in Canada, to go in order to go to Denmark, you got to be mentally strong. What tips would you share with players in order to, you know, be able to go to another country to leave your brothers behind, to leave your family behind, um, and to leave the place that you grew up behind to go and obviously pursue your career and your dream football or what we call it in Canada soccer what, what advice would you share with players mentally that you need to be mentally prepared for I think you have to make sure this is a decision you really want to do because everybody says oh I want to go but once you get there it's a, a definite definite culture shock culture shock like you feel like oh it's not what I'm used to you know first uh, the hours are different maybe you're not used to the way the way you sleep you know the way you wake up your breakfast all your routine is different over there you have to basically you have to mentally be prepared for everything that's there you're definitely going to get homesick you're going to miss your family and all that but you have to make sure you realize why you're there what you're working towards and I feel like that goal will help you get through it nice and you know was there anything that you liked about Denmark you know when you I were- loved how how open the city was and the country itself I feel like everybody was so nice to me it, it pretty much helped that English was their second language, so a lot of them speak English, mm-hmm. which helped my trans my transition even more. I just I loved how comforting they were to me. Like nobody was like showed a bad eye or anything. Like they helped me improve a lot, and they wanted to see you do better. Nice, that's really good. And can you just paint a picture for the viewers, like you know, for people that haven't been to Denmark, what what does Denmark look like? What's the weather like? Um, does it have nice architects you know just little details like that is the food good just you know share a little bit about that i really enjoyed the food the food was, was amazing like, i love the sausages the sausages over there the hot dogs was pretty much good city wise it's more like like italy you know like you know the european countries a little bit more older day older days was pretty good i also like the scenery weather rain a lot like almost every day was raining Mm. So if you, so if you like the rain, you'll love it over there. Got it, like an England vibe. It's definitely an England vibe. Got it. So I've come up to my last two questions right here. Um, what sacrifices have you and your family made for football? Pardon me. Uh, sorry. The the second last question is: What sacrifices have you and your family made for football? Uh, just being uh, being able to live with me, moving away by myself, I think that was the biggest sacrifice we made. Because when I'm still young, like me personally, my mom did a lot of things for me, like cooking wise. So I wanted to chef. So I think that was the biggest thing for me, like making sure I know what to eat that that can give me energy for the day. Mm-hmm. Other than that, for like we were we were well prepared. We knew what was what was gonna happen with me and like the situation wise. So we were prepared just to. The nutrition side that was really important. That was really sacrificed for us. Got it. Yeah. Last question. What's um you know the most memorable soccer soccer or football moment for you? My most memorable soccer experience. I think the in Italy we played Juventus, their second team in the term card. I think Vio Reggiano, something like that. I came on. My first play was a was a set piece. They crossed the ball to me. I hit off the body my left foot and scored, and the crowd was going crazy. Like it was TFC, they just tied Juventus second team. Like it was like unheard of, and I got a lot of people that come to me. Oh, well done, you know. So I felt really good about myself after that. That was a big moment for myself growing up. Mm, a lot of confidence boost right there, right? Yeah, exactly. Sure. All right. Um, was it you know was it anything that I'm missing or that you wanted to add in? No, I think you hit out everything, all the spots. Got it. Okay, so just the last part, it's just five, five um, fun questions. I need to switch this up. But yeah, I'm a, it's like speed questions. You got to ask them quick. Okay, okay. Cool. All right. Um, who's your favorite team? Tottenham the Monsters. Favorite player? Oh, it's tricky. Right? Still Gareth Bale right now. Gareth Bale? Uh, favorite cleats? Nike Merrick Rose, just the whole thing. Okay, favorite food? <laughs> pizza, has to be pizza. 
favorite and the last one favorite artist favorite artist right now has to be little baby oh baby okay fire i gotta okay i gotta ask about the um the head tie oh okay i gotta ask about it i mean yo it makes you stand out but i gotta ask you like what's the um purpose behind it like why do you wear it Honestly, because I wear like I have braids, you know, braids or twists, and every time I play, the sweat gets in my eyes, and it's it's so annoying. So I just started to put that on. It helps, they like, kind of protect my eyes a little bit from the sweat. So because of that, that's been the reason. Yeah, no, it's it's fire, it's fire. But has anybody ever said anything to you, the coach, the managers, anything like that? They're like, yo, my, take that shit out. <laughs> at, at first, they're like, no, you're, there's no way you're wearing that. And then I got injured in training, like very close to my eye, and to hide it, like, that to put, like, that to, like, add stitches, so they have to put, like, some cotton on to hide it, and to keep it in place, they have to put my headband, so, like, it was a blessing in disguise. Because of that little injury, my coach allowed me to start wearing my headband, and ever since then, I never took it off. Got it. I mean, it's fire, though. It's fire. <laughs> so, um, Kule, before we go, I just want to thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Soccer Nation podcast. No problem. Thank <laughs> you.